Hi everyone, it's Agnes and today I've got a lovely interview for you with Mercy. Mercy, I know I haven't pronounced it exactly right, so you pronounce it for us so that we get it right. The English way, so Mercy, like not Mercy, mercy yeah. but Mercy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's lovely. It's lo and you are currently, before we go into your interview and your success story, you are currently in Italy, but yeah. your background, I'll let you tell because you've told me, but I'll, I'll let you share it so people know where you're originally born and where you're originally from. So my parents are Eritrean. I was born and raised in Ethiopia, like um, a part of my life. And then we moved to Europe and we have moved a little bit in Europe. So I've lived in Sweden and now I'm living, I'm currently living in Italy. Lovely, so, yeah. lovely. You're a bit of a traveler as well, which is yeah. nice. It's nice to experience yeah, different yeah. cultures. Yeah, for sure. You're yeah. actually where my roots are because I'm, I'm Italian, French, French Italian. So my roots are from Italy. In fact, so, yeah. when I read your surname, it, it was, it was <laughs> kind of familiar. So I, yeah. I kind of knew. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because uh, like surnames that finish with the E, with the I, like yep. we, call it, we call it E here. It's kind of normal to have those around. So yeah. Yeah, I did, exactly. I did notice. Exactly. Yeah. So you have got, I've read your stories and fantastic, uh, just an amazing end result and you put in a lot of work. So we said that we would get you on here to go through and explain it in a bit more detail because I think it's nice for people, yes, to hear your story read out, but then to see there is a real person behind the story and then what they actually went through mentally emotionally the things they worked on what they had to improve in themselves so can you take us back to the beginning of what was going on what happened and then what you did and what result you got so a little bit of a timeline and chronological so you start wherever you want to start uh, okay everything started when i was i think 13 or 14 and my physics teacher gave me the book uh the secret and then he said to me, look, read it. It's going to change your life. But I grew up like in a Christian family. I'm, I'm not like, basically the church was next to our house and everything that was said inside the church, we could hear it. So the, my first approach to the book was religious wise. Mm. I felt I did not resonate with it. I felt, I felt like I was betraying, I don't know, my religion or something like mm. that. So that was my first point of view. But what happened was, you know, some, some part of me was activated. I started noticing after that, like little things when I thought positive, you know, positive things happened and stuff. So yeah, that was my first encounter. So I didn't research or do anything of that sort. Obviously, uh, 10 years after that, I think 10 or 11, 12 years after that, uh, uh, like everybody here, probably no judgment. I broke up with my boyfriend, my first boyfriend, obviously. So you start like, uh, you, you, it's, it's, it's as if you come out of your bubble and you know, you go to through something and you want to change and you want to know what happened, especially when somebody doesn't give you a very good explanation to what is going on. So he was mm. not very specific. He didn't tell me anything. He, he just said, I don't love you anymore. And that was not like, what? Yeah. what does that mean and i mean you loved me yesterday but you don't love me anymore today so what's going on so yeah and i've always been that type of person who thought you know i love myself i'm perfect because i i heard it from everybody uh, everybody told me you're so beautiful you're so perfect you're smart so it was just so strange for me to hear that i was not good enough for him and he didn't love me anymore so it was like it was the word i don't love you anymore felt like uh you're not for me you're not perfect and all that sort of stuff mm. so i yeah that that is how it kind of triggered and i started you know researching and stuff but nothing actually happened i mean i was researching the bad stuff at the time you know how to get back with your ex and all that sort of stuff but one time I was sitting down with my uncle, my great uncle, I think I told you in the email mm -hmm. about this. 
I was sitting down with my great uncle and I was growing, I was going through a lot of stuff at that time, a lot of changes. I was doing bad at school. I was doing, you know, a lot of things. So I was sitting down with my great uncle and he was telling me about the body and the spirit. He, he just likes to talk about this stuff and he's very wise. Um, and he's in his eighties. So he's like, look, uh, you know, there is a diff I, I can see you're suffering. And he's like, you know, you know that it's not the body that suffers, it's the spirit that suffers when it's not manifesting itself. But I'm like, how am I going to get out of this lunch? Are we going to finish soon? <laughs> but, and then he said to me, and I said to him, you know, just to keep the conversation going, obviously to distract myself because I was usually in the autopilot mode. I was always distracting myself. So mm -hmm. I would even listen to other people speak just so I could get distracted from the stress that I had in my head. Yeah. So I'm like, well, there is no difference between the spirit and the body. I mean, yes, there is a difference, you know, when, you, when you're little, everybody tells you, even in church or other people, you know, every, everyone who's spiritual will tell you, hey, there is a difference, the spirit, the body, the father, the son, the eye. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? And he said to me, you know, if I pinch you right now, or if I burn your body right now, would you feel pain? And I said, yes, I would definitely feel pain. And he said, okay, but if I do that, once your body is, once you're not here, once you've died, would you feel the pain? And I said, no. And that right there, Ooh. I know it's something that we've all, always heard, but it just clicked in my head. Okay. And then he said to me, it's because it's when you feel pain, when you feel happiness, when you feel any type of emotion, it's not you your body who's feeling it is actually your spirit who's mm. manifesting that within you so after that yes obviously the obsession started i started researching and reading i i looked at the dpd and yes uh one thing led to another obviously i came across to neville so this yeah. is this is like the spiritual journey of the situation so should I talk about the now the, the sure. story? The first? Yeah, yeah. So basically, I'm going to talk about my first ex-boyfriend, obviously, which triggered uh, all this. So basically, uh, like I said, he broke up with me. I'm not very, uh, I, I have a journal. If you want me to look at the dates and stuff, I will look them up. But I'm not That's very fine. sure at the exact days. No but problem. anyways, he broke up with me. He, he basically, we were supposed to go on a trip. Uh, after a month and we fixed for that trip we we were just on the right track and we were perfect I mean I have never had any problem with him so he said to me the only thing that he said to me was uh you know what I don't love you anymore and then obviously I started insisting of finding out what what mm -hmm. was what this meant so I started being you know insistent I started calling him went down to his house I cried I talked to him what's going on tell me explain this to me and obviously the more I tried the more he pulled away so the more I texted him the more he stopped responding and all that sort of stuff and I started you know uh, research, like like I said, I, I had started researching with about Neville and all that sort of stuff. So I had started uh, uh, at, at some point, I, I think at some point, yeah, I came across uh, your videos and I'm like, I have watched other YouTubers, but I did not resonate with, with all of them because there were things that uh, I think to build up your belief, you have to, you have to see success. So I was very attracted by the success stories in your, mm. in your videos. So I think that actually helped me with my belief because I had a lot of beliefs. I had a lot of problems with my self-love. I found out, obviously, I had a lot of thoughts in my head that I thought I, I had under control I, that I, I did not even know about. So the journey began. Uh, so uh I, I i think i saw somewhere or i read somewhere because i i had not very clear what i did at that time because i did a lot of things but i read somewhere that i had to stop the contact that i had to break the energy and that i had to start working on myself and obviously i started watching your videos about self-love and i started you know finding out what my beliefs were but at the same time, there were things happening on his side where he basically, after he broke up with me, after two weeks, I think, uh, he started go. he started, like, I started watching because 
you know, you, when you break up with somebody, you start being obsessive and you start controlling everything that they're doing. And they basically, you, you want that little dopamine that you used to get when you were with them. So you, mm. you, even if it's like little crumbs, you just yeah. go to their Instagram and watch if they like someone's video or if they have, you know, posted something. So yeah. I was addicted. Like I thought I was, you know, over him, working on myself, being spiritual. But at the same time, I was being obsessive, controlling everything that he was doing. So I, I started controlling and obviously I, 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 I was so scared. When we were together, he was perfect. Like he was so nice to me, but I don't know why I would imagine him with other people. You know what? Like Edda would be like really cute with this girl. I don't know. It's, it's just something that I did that was really, really bad. So there was this girl that I was so scared of in the group, in my friend's group. And that's what happened. Once we broke up, I started noticing that he started going out a lot with her. He, uh, he's, they started posting a lot of things a lot. And I started freaking out. Uh, and in fact, that's what happened. It just like the more I freaked out about it, the more I reacted to it, it just started happening. So that's when I so I let go. Like I let go of everything, like not letting go of him. I, I let go of the negative beliefs that I had. I just, you know, when once you hit the bottom, you just say, Okay, I think mm. I'm at the bottom now. <laughs> I've yeah. tried everything my way. I've tried using willpower. I've tried everything I think it's it's time to stop just stop mm. it I was tired of like feeling all of the negative emotions like all, all of like even though even though I was looking at his Instagram I was looking at what he was doing and I was feeling negative emotion I was confusing that negative emotion with other types of emotions because we usually confuse emotions within ourselves we confuse love with fear because we do something for somebody thinking we love them but we're doing it. we're actually doing it for them because we fear losing them so I was mixed up like I was yeah. mixing up all sorts of emotions so I said, you know, and I was tired of feeling all of those emotions. And I said, you know what, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop working on myself. I'm going to start loving myself. And I started researching what loving yourself actually means. Mm. So I, so what the first thing I, I did was I actually sat down and I said, what am I feeling? So what am I feeling right now? I like, I'm feeling terrible. What am I feeling? What's actually making me feel terrible? I made a list because sometimes we don't even know what, what, like, uh, I would be fighting with my brother and he would be mad about something, but he would think he, he's mad at me because I drank his juice, but he's mad about something else. So sometimes yeah. we, we think we're mad about something or sometimes we think we feel emotion about something, but mm. in reality, we're feeling emotion about other things. So I sat down, I said, I'm going to make a list uh, of the things, what, what I hate about my life if I'm feeling like this if I'm feeling crap that means there's something that I don't like that is something uh, my 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 there's something that I'm not comfortable with so I made a list uh, of the things that were going wrong so I said you know I'm not with him I'm doing really terrible at school uh, I'm I I'm not concentrated I'm I'm I'm, I'm I, I work as a teacher I, I teach little kids uh, English and I'm not present when I'm teaching them. So I'm not mm. satisfied with work. So I wrote down like at least 20 things. So, and then I said, uh, you know what? I'm going to start working in each and every one of them. So I wanted to write an affirmation, which is opposite to what I was writing. So I would write, I'm not with him, but then I wanted to write, I'm with him, but then I had a block because reality was like, no, you're not. You're not with him. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So I, then I had to make another list of the things that said, why am I not with him? So I said, why am I not with him? Uh, because he said he doesn't love me because I'm not good enough. And then all of the negative beliefs that I had about myself, because uh, because I thought, you know, I'm, I'm, start, I'm studying to become an engineer and he was studying to become an engineer too, but he wanted to move away and I didn't want to move away. So now the reason started to pop up because I don't want to move away. So he said, 
he doesn't want to be with me so he's trying to break up with me before and then uh because uh because i'm not good enough because all of the things all of the stupid things like uh because because i'm brown i know you know in a society that in 2020 yeah. it, but it was a belief yeah. that i had i'm sorry to say that but yes yeah uh uh, because I don't know, because, uh, because I'm not motivated because there were so many things mm. because, because of my, maybe he doesn't accept my family because I'm not accepted in his family. So there was another list. So within the list, there was another list. Wow. So I started, uh, because I am one year older than him. So because I'm one year older than him, maybe he prefers to be with a younger girl all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. and then once I made that list, the second list, obviously about him, I started, you know, uh, proving to like, because, um, you know, like beliefs are created once our brain finds proof for a thought that we have. So for example, if you tell me, Hey, Mercy, you're not good at math. At that time, it's just a thought. But when you, when I first fell my math exam, it's no longer a thought, it's a belief. Mm. So, so I said to myself, okay, I have these beliefs. I have proof for, for them. He doesn't want to be with me. I have proof. He doesn't want to be with me. Uh, uh, so they're no longer thoughts. Thoughts are easy to change, but beliefs are difficult to change. And beliefs trigger emotions more than thoughts because your thought you can change and they don't trigger emotion, but beliefs trigger very fast emotions. So mm. I had a belief that he didn't want to be with a, with a younger girl. He didn't want to be with an older girl. So that triggered emotions within me so i had to change that belief so what yeah. i did was okay i'm going to start working on these negative beliefs that i have okay so i started going through them one by one proving them wrong you know so yeah. i said he doesn't love me i started thinking uh, about on the occasions where he loved me he respected me he showed me uh, and then i started you know uh, proving to myself it is it is me who has changed within me because every I started uh, learning about everyone is you pushed out and all that sort of things mm. and then I said maybe he doesn't want to be with the, you know the, on the list it was like he doesn't want to be with an older girl uh, boys don't want to be with an older girl that comes from men don't want to be with an older girl because as a young you know it's, it's the things that yeah. we actually go through yeah. so I said to myself I started you know researching people obviously it was not even difficult because <laughs> Thing, thankfully there was Megan who married Prince Harry <laughs> <laughs> so she basically cancelled a lot of things from my list for me she basically yep. is amazing so for my list she was the, per the perfect person she was older than him she was a divorcee she was all that sort of thing yeah. so it, was, it just helped me with my belief you know so I started yes. you know everything that I had on my list I proved it wrong because I think mm. it's because I, I don't know you you probably know there are two ways of changing your belief. One is affirmation and the other one was, uh, you know, proving it wrong. So I just proved mm -hmm. everything wrong. So when I even affirmed, it was not difficult. Uh, or when I scripted, it was not difficult because there were not that, those negative beliefs that told me, hey, this is not true. I had worked on them. So yeah, I started doing that work and I started developing also my, my self-esteem, my self-love and all that sort of stuff. So mm. I started saying, I love myself and, you know, and then every time I say something, I find proof for it so that my brain can actually accept it. And at the same time, um, I, I did work on, um, on the situation when he, where he was with the, with the other girl. Uh, I did the rubbing out technique as I sent you the video. Yeah. Uh, so I did the rubbing out technique. Uh, so what happened, do you want me to tell you what happened about the rubbing out technique? Sure. It's a, sure. actually a very funny story. Yeah, I like go ahead, you. go ahead. So I did, the, I, did the rub, I, I did the rubbing out technique really differently from what other people do it, but I did it with a video and stuff. And I actually believe that it was going to work because I really do believe that techniques, mm. all the techniques for the love structure, rubbing out technique, affirmation, scripting, all of them work once you have done the work within you. So I did the rubbing out technique. And then after a week, I so I was can like, you, my can you just explain how you did it? Cause your little video thing was, I'd never seen that before. That was so interesting. So basically uh, I had a group, <laughs> I had a group photo. I had a group photo of us and uh, she was in it. I was in it. He was in it. So what I started doing is mm, I screenshotted and then I started video screening my 
iPhone because I have an iPhone and I started video screening uh, and then I started canceling out everybody. So I had a video of the screen being recorded. So it, it was there. So, and then I, I left me and him only there. So there, there are many ways to do the technique. You don't have to be as, a, as creative as me. You can actually do it with, a, with an eraser. You can do it with yeah. many ways. Yeah. So I did that. After a week, um, after a week, I, I noticed that um, they posted, they, okay, so basically I noticed that they both had uh, canceled, like they, they both had uh, muted me on their stories on Instagram ah. but there were other friends with them who posted the Instagram yeah. story and I remember I was in my aunt's house we were I was trying to help her like fix her um, her her drawers and her closet yeah. and there were like clothes all over the bed and I saw that and I saw like the bed and I knew that I was supposed to be doing that all day to helping her put everything inside the closet. I saw that and I said, I, I wanted to cry. I wanted to react to it. And then I said, no, I've got better things to do. <laughs> so, yep. you know, like this pile of clothes are not going to be there today. I'm not going to make that waste my day. I don't care. I'm going to leave it there. You know, I know what I've said. And mm. if like it, the same thing kind of like, I will tell you this in the future, but my leaving in the end, I tried to leave in the end with him, but it was difficult for me to create an image because there were kind of a lot of beliefs around him that I couldn't work on. Mm. So my living in the end was actually having this interview with you. So I was telling you. <laughs> Fantastic. I would, I would go... It's so strange that you asked me to put headphones on because I would be walking on the street and I would, I didn't want people to think I was crazy. So I was like, let me put my headphones on. I would put my headphones on and then start talking to you and tell you about my success story. Wow. I'm crying right now because oh, this is so emotional. Oh, that's so, lovely. So this was my living in the end. So in fact, when I, when I wrote you my email and you, you didn't actually like invite me to do an interview with you immediately, I was like, but, but universe, I asked you <laughs> to talk to her. I was like, I was doing, but then you, and then when you wrote me, I was like, I was so excited. You know, this actually, you know, it's, I, I know you can manifest so many things in your life, but it's always, yeah. you know, so nice to have that 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 specific thing when it happens is just always happy yeah. anyways just to go back to the story <laughs> I, I I looked at I looked at my phone and I was like okay I'm not going to make this ruin my day yeah uh, I don't care I know what I've asked for so I'm just going to leave it as that and so after after two weeks after that if I'm if I'm I, I have to control but after two weeks after that there was a bridge of incidents that happened uh, it was just, uh, it, it was a really amazing bridge of incidents, but it would be too long to tell you guys now. Uh, so I remember, uh, I was sitting down minding my own business with my friend. I don't, have you ever been to Italy? Yes. So we like in my town, uh, you know, we, we even have tables on the street yep. where you sit down and you, you drink your coffee, you drink your drinks and you talk with people because the, most of the streets, car, cars can pass, can't pass by them. Yes. So we, I was just sitting down minding my own business with my other friend. Uh, we were drinking coffee. At this point, I had stopped talking about him and all that sort of stuff. And who was passing by? She was passing by. So at this point, she was not talking to me. She had muted me on Instagram and all that sort of stuff. And then she was passing by and she said, she stopped. So mind you, I was so powerful that I made her break up with her ex-boyfriend, made her together with my boyfriend. That's how powerful I am with manifesting. <laughs> so I was sitting down one day, my own business, she was passing by and she, she stopped and she's like, Mercy, how are you? And I'm like, you're talking to me now? And she's like, I miss you so much. Do you know what happened? Do you know what Edo did to me? I keep on mentioning his name. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but anyways, she said, that. do you know what happened? Do you know what he did to me? He did this, 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 this to me. And I'm like, ah, okay. So 
he threw me out of the group out of nowhere. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. She's like, I don't have anybody now. I don't have friends because I remember speaking about it too after I did the rubbing out technique. Yeah. I remember saying, you know, uh, we, we, were, we are good friends, me and her. Uh, and I was always like, I was always approaching her from out of fear and all that negative emotions. Mm. So I, I had, I had my, my own problems too, towards her. She was, she, she probably, she is a very good soul. Probably everyone is good, but you know, everyone is actually you pushed out. So I, I did some of the things too. So when I did the rubbing out technique, I actually wished her well. I, I actually wish that we were good friends and that we, we loved each other and all that sort of stuff. I didn't wish her bad or, or any of that mm. sort of stuff because at the end of the day, the circle will come back to me. Yep. So anyways, uh, anyways, she's like, uh, I don't have any friends now. I'm no longer with anybody. He threw me out of the group. He didn't even give me explanation. He hates me now. He doesn't want to talk to me anymore. And I said, but, but... I pretended and I said, but you guys are just friends. I mean, I was his ex, but you guys are, I don't know. We were just friends. She says this to me and yeah. I'm like, okay, it's okay. Come on. If you don't have any friends, it's okay. You can hang out with me. And she's like, thank you. You're so nice. I knew you were so nice. And when we broke up with him, I had a belief that said, he will continue to speak bad about me. I don't know why, mm. but I was so scared that everybody would hate me. In fact, I isolated myself from the whole group because I was so scared of what he was saying about me because yeah. he broke up with me out of the blue. I don't know what reason he was giving to his friends, especially because when somebody breaks up with you, they need a reason. So they will probably make up even stuff. So I was so scared. Mm. Anyways, yes. so she's like... I, I should not believe him when he spoke bad about me, about you. And um, I'm like, man, yeah. I, I'm so powerful. <laughs> I mean, I make people do stuff. So he did actually. So I went home and I scripted that he, he thought really good about me. He spoke really good about me. And I worked on that. And Lovely. after, yes, after a few, a few, um, I don't know, I think it was about around two months. Um, so at this point, I had tried everything. So at the beginning, before I tried contacting him, I was blocked. I had I had done the whole thing that you're not supposed to do, and <laughs> nothing actually worked. Um, so I was actually, you know, I said to my I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to stop me using my willpower. I'm just going to let the universe handle this because mm. my willpower is not getting me anywhere, especially because I thought of all the ways my willpower can fix this and there was no way because i was basically blocked everywhere he never wanted to talk to me he would ignore me like when we were in the library and all that sort of stuff so there was no way of fixing this so i said you know what let the universe do it because when you're actually working from your point of view you're working from one consciousness point of view but when you're working from the universe's point of view you're working from the whole consciousness point of view so i said you know what i rather let 27 billion people handle this situation instead of one person handling this situation so i'm just going to let it go so i i did let it go of when finding ways to talk to him and i had a little doubt uh that uh, I, I did say he was stubborn, he would never do it, and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I did do work on that. I did change that. Uh, every time I affirm, if a negative belief comes in, I did fix that negative belief because continuously affirming something that you don't actually believe, like, right, for example, this room is so small, I could continuous, continuously say, there's a big elephant here, there's a big elephant here, there's, a, there's not going to be a big elephant, the elephant will not fit in here. So yeah. either I should change my, my affirmation, say, I'm next to an elephant, so the universe will probably move me to India and then get me next to an elephant, or I have to work on my belief and I have to work on me and just move myself to the garden and say, there is a big elephant. So you have to actually work on the things that you're saying because just saying them does not, does not let things happen. So um, anyways, I did work on that. And I think after two months or something, I, 
this is the way that I never thought he would contact me. Uh, like I was sitting down at home and my phone just rang. I, 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 I had expected like a, a message or, or I don't know, a follow on Instagram because I had, he had stopped following me or all that sort of stuff because we miss people and we actually want their having them back in our life. So we actually do stuff before, you know, you taste the water before you actually, mm. so he called me and he's like, Hey, uh, go to the mountains and I have your stuff. Uh, do you want me to bring it to your house? And I was like, I didn't want to, you know, I, I, I did not know what, why he was saying these, mm. but was it because, so I said to him, you know what, don't worry. You could just leave it somewhere familiar for me. And then my brother will pick it up. Mm. And he's like, no, no, it's okay. I can bring it for you. And I said, okay, then it's okay. Mm. You can bring it here. And then my brother will meet you there and he will pick it up. I was just trying to do him a favor, you know, yep. just, and he's like, no, no, I prefer to come get it for you so that we can talk. Ah. And I'm like, ah, oh, you want to talk? Okay. And I said, okay, you can bring it for me. So he brought the stuff. He didn't even bring it out of the car. He just wanted to talk. And then all of the things that I, that I actually thought of, uh, that I actually said in my head, you know, after I started, I started seeing him with a nice image in my head, I did. Uh, it just started happening and I was so amazed I just kind of like looked at him and I'm like wow yeah so that happened and after that we started going out uh, we started you know I I was so like when he broke up with me I was an egoistic person like my ego was you know I don't know my parents boosted up my ego just so I don't know trying to protect us you know they told yeah. us so many things when we were younger I mean so many good things but uh, yes they said you're super beautiful you can have anyone you want and then so he when he broke up with me he just brought down all of the bases the, the ego mm. was built in so yeah. it was very difficult for me to accept so I I was not even sure that I wanted him back Mm. Or I wanted him back so that my ego could just create another belief on the beliefs that I had before. So um, anyways, we started going out, we started hanging out and I noticed we, we never had anything in common because I don't know, like, since you said you're Italian, but here in Italy, what happens is you basically start going out with somebody when you start going out with them when you're, once you're 19, 20, and then you do the university together. And then once you finish university, you start living together for a year or two, and then you get married and then you have kids. That's like the whole process. Mm. If you're in your around 30, 31, and you're, you haven't done that process, then it's like, your life is this just a belief. It's, it's a stereotype belief. That yeah. You have. Yep. Or if somebody, or if somebody breaks up with you in the middle of that process, it's going to be difficult for you to find someone else because everyone is in that process. Yeah. You know, these are stupid beliefs that we have yeah. here in Italy. So yeah. I was like, you know, I'm ready. He's going to be my, my first boyfriend. He's going to be that forever. I'm going to get married to him. And th the whole line was, was built, but he broke it in the middle. So the only reason I was going out with him was not because we had so many things in common and we had, you know, yes we studied the same subject but I liked like for after you know after we got back together I became super spiritually even a spiritually egoistic person because I had a very big spiritual ego because I continued talking about this I continued believing I'm better than everybody you know all that sort of stuff because I was yeah. spiritual I was perfect you know yes so and he yeah. was not yeah um, they call that yeah. spiritual grandiosity. I loved when I first heard that. And, I, and you do <laughs> see. <laughs> I did have that. I had a really big period of that. So I was like, you know, I mean, I could, I, I'm, I'm spiritually awakened. I could have anyone I want. Why am I with him? But yeah. no, it's like, apart from joke, we did not have anything in common. And I did ask myself, you know, everyone is you pushed out. I can manifest him to be the person that I want him to be. But it just didn't feel like, you know, the work that I wanted to do around him. Also because mm -hmm. like even physically, he was not the type of person I was always attracted. I, I like blonde with 
curly hairs with blue eyes and he was completely the opposite mm. i just settled i hope he never sees this video <laughs> probably will because i'm so scared of that but you know he knows it so i i actually explained it to him but i yeah. just settled for him because one out of fear out of fear that i would not be able to do the whole process of that yeah. you know of getting married because i have family members who did that and then who had kids and beautiful oh. homes now and I, did, I have family members who didn't do that and who are always you know accused by the other family members that they were they're not perfect they're not yeah they did the wrong thing so i was so scared of becoming them uh but there's nothing wrong with that by the way um, yeah i was so yeah. scared of this that i wanted this i settled for something that i did not want mm. so yeah finding that out helped so uh yeah at, at some point we just couldn't click anymore and i i i didn't want to do the work on him because i knew like why why try to why try to attract something when something and create something like why try to create something when you already have something that's already created and yeah. like i said there was there was a success story on your channel of a girl who attracted a famous person yeah and so i started you know playing with the idea hey oh what if i wanted to you know can i do this i mean mm. is it possible so i started entertaining that idea and that's how uh the second journey began so i actually told him you know we could be friends uh and he was so hurt he couldn't understand why but uh, yeah. and then i and I, and then obviously I, I scripted about, I, I love scripting. So from all the techniques of the law of attraction, scripting is my go-to. Yeah. Everybody resonates with everything they want, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, I scripted that he was happy and he was no longer, you know, sad about me and that we, we went both on our ways and if 10 years from now we can, like we, we find each other and we are in the same spiritual level or we're in the same um, spiritual level i'm sorry uh, we're yeah. in the same state maybe yeah. as an avogadro says maybe we can get back together on it but for mm. now right now for the reality that i was in he was just yeah. not uh, the type of guy that i wanted mm. so such good learning in that isn't it yeah i love I, whole... I love your lists and breaking down the beliefs in proving them wrong. I, th I think that's such a great explanation, how you explain that. It's lovely. It's actually something that I do now. I even started practicing throughout everything, like for, uh, when it comes anything, like every, I think negative emotions are there to show us what's, what's going on so that yeah. we can be in the state that we want to be, to feel mm. the contrast. I mean, the darkness has to be there to feel the light. So mm. every time there is the darkness, I just sit down and I just go through it and I say, you know what, why am I feeling like this? Instead of like judging it, I yes. just, you know, like for example, I would put on pants and I say, oh, these pants are tight. And then I say, oh my, like, instead of like saying it's because i've been eating pizza this past few days it's it's emily's fault she <laughs> continues calling me to go out with her i hate that emily she's she broke up with her you know just instead of like yeah. going that room i just sit down and i say okay these pants are tight okay what am i going to do about it you know yeah. I lose weight okay uh and, but it's difficult to lose weight probably the voice would pop out but i'll be like you know i will do something I'll, I'll try to find a way that is fun like in, in my memory there has mm. been occasions where i walked and listened to audible books yeah uh, or talked like a crazy person <laughs> and yeah. i lost weight and i would think of those moments you know those moments were really nice we could do them i talked myself into loving mm. and uh working into into the things that i want so any problem right now i just sit down and i just mm. talk it through and i just try to fix it so, yeah. Lovely. Yeah. I love that. I love that uh, way you describe that. Not surprised you're going to be an engineer. You broke down the mechanics of it really well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try to be as much as possible. No, as it's good. As as possible. It's yeah. good. It's good. So okay. next part of the journey, what happened after that? so the next part of, of the journey is i'm just going to go a little into this and then i'm just going to tell you how i come out of it before yeah. i started talking to you about the person that i'm going out with right now 
Yeah. So the, this thing was, uh, so while this was happening, other stuff were happening in my life where, uh, it's especially around the time where I was sitting down with my uncle and he was explaining this to me, I was feeling really bad about a situation that happened to me. So like I said, I'm a, a teacher. I teach little kids English and I usually go to their houses and I do babysitting and I do English teaching at the same time just so I can, you know, help myself through college or yeah. through university. So while I was doing this one time, what happened was this person, she lost a lot of stuff. And I don't know. I don't even know what she lost. And she just, she didn't even talk to me. She just went straight to the, to the, to the, to the police and she mm. reported me. So just to tell you how, like, how I knew it started from me was the idea of like growing up as, um, as, as a, like as a brown person, obviously, yeah, yeah. we have fears. We, we do have them. Yeah. I, I know like we could talk about them right now because it's yeah. 2020 and everybody's talking about yeah. it, but we do have fears. So yeah. I've, I've always had this, uh, this two fears. So I've always had, uh, since, uh, since everybody considered me, especially the moms of the kids considered me as a beautiful girl. She's such a beautiful girl. She's such a beautiful soul. It's really nice to have her as a role model. I've always been scared of the dads hitting on me. <laughs> yep. This is my very big scared. Like I'm, I'm very fearful. And yep. the second one is like them losing stuff and then blaming it on me. So I've yep. always had these. Yeah. Anyways. So, um, I remember, yeah, I, I, I have, I, so I think it's, it, it started from this basically. I think the yeah. whole thing started from this. Uh, anyway, she did that and I found out because the police came into my house, they searched my house. I, I, so just yeah. to tell you a background about me, like I said, uh, we grew up really Christian. And so my parents actually used fear against us not to, not to make us do anything. So they were yeah. very intelligent to use fear. So if you do this, if you, if you take 10 euros from somebody, you lose 100 euros. So don't ever do it. Yeah. Or, you know, a really yes. good Christian girl would never, ever do this. So if you do that, you are going to go to hell. You know, they have, they have really used uh, fear against, even though it's not the teaching of the religion, obviously mm. they have, my parents have taken it to the extreme where they, they, where they have like put a lot of fear on us. So I am very, very, I've never been drunk. I've never had alcohol. I've never smoked. I've never taken yeah. anything from someone else. And yeah. every time someone does something, I blame it on me. So it was just so, so strange to find out when my mom called me and she's like, Hey, there's somebody here. What's going yeah. on? And I freaked out and I came home and, you know, uh, so after that, I was just like, what's going on? Yeah. And I said, but like, especially the ego was really hurt because like I said, I had this repetition of the, the perfect girl. So mm. what are, what are people going to do when they find out about me? Yeah. Uh, what's going to happen and especially because in Italy uh, whatever you do inside your house you don't even have to tell anyone your neighbor is going to find out about it yep. not just your neighbor but the person who lives in the other part of the city is going to know about it I know so <laughs> it was just, it was so just true so, I, it was so difficult for me I I I, I, re I just, I, I remember at that moment, I felt a lot of negative emotions. I felt I was mm. sad. I was crying and stuff. I did yeah. so many things that I was not supposed to do. I contacted the person, even though they told me never to do that. Yeah. My lawyers were telling me, don't do that. You're just, mm. you know, giving in for her. Mm. She, she's probably going to have proof against you. Mm. I, but I begged her and I told her, you know what, what did you lose? Even if it take, it's going to take me 20 years of my life to pay you back, I will do it. Just, yeah. just stop doing this. Because just stop doing to, this. Yeah, especially because, um, especially because if it, my, my, my university career is going to be ruined, I'm not going to find a job after that. I can't be able to travel. There are so many things that yeah. this could influence my... So I just sat, you know what? I said, <laughs> I, I was feeling all these emotions. Then... I sat down like I always do. I, I will show you like over here. I have like, this is how I sit down and I write down what is going on in my life and why yeah. am I feeling like this? So I sat yeah. down and I, and I wrote down, why do I feel like this? I, I said, 
I feel like this because of this situation. What is this situation? This situation is this, 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 this. Okay. Um, okay. How am I going to be? What, what would make me happy mm. if this person disappeared from my whole life? Mm. If this case was closed? Yep. And if my lower record was as white as snow, these were the three things that I wanted. Yeah. I, and then that I completely forgave and forgot about this. So wow. that's, that's actually what I wrote down. So mm. what would make me happy? Like I'm feeling mm. this shitty right now. What would make me happy? What yeah. should I do? Like, so um, I, I wrote those down. So I said, you know, so this person disappears from my life. You yeah. know, there has been occasions where she completely moved to another country. She, she had moved to London. So I, I, you know, I, I supported yeah. that. Maybe she would move away, you know? Yes. And, yeah. and then um, the, the case was closed. And I'm like, by some miracle, it could happen. You know, there, there has been occasions in my life where, where things have happened. I did not have explanation for by the way, at this point, I have been working on little things because I advise everyone to, to always attract little things. Because yeah. if you try, when you try to attract the big things, if you have attracted a pen, a blue bottom, a pink outer boost, or all that sort of stuff, then mm. the big things, it will help you later. So attract the silly things, a cup of coffee, all the silly things, attract those. So there has been occasions where I have attracted somebody giving me a, a pen mm. and I did not have explanation for that. So, you know, it could happen like that. So it supported my belief system. Mm. And I think it's about, it took about like a few months. Uh, my lawyer calls me and she says, hey, you know what? They have decided and they found all, all their stuff. So they have decided to close the case if you want. And then I wrote down, I, if I come out of it as a winner, so I come out of this as a winner yeah. and not, not as a loser, not as a person who's crying, you know, all the time. So she said, if you want, we can even make a case against them because mm. they did a lot of Falsely damage accused. on you. Yep. Yes. They did a lot of damage. So if you want to continue with this, uh, we can, we can even make, you know, mm. but uh, I'm going to be honest. I didn't do it. I no. know it's not going to. But, you know, I didn't do it because I, I knew it was something that started for me. And mm. I knew they probably did not understand my situation, what I was feeling. Because usually mm. when you accuse someone, mm. even the accused, like, sometimes I, uh, I I feel bad for the person who breaks up with the person. Or I feel bad for the person, for the boss who has to treat the other person in bad. Because I, everyone is actually thinking about what they're feeling mm. because of that person. But those people are actually feeling different kinds of emotions too. So if they're, and they have reasons to what they're doing, like to, mm. to everything they're doing, they actually have reasons. Mm. So she actually had a reason. She, I don't think she woke up one morning saying, hey, Mercy's so nice. I'm going to destroy her life. She had no. her no. reasons. So I said, you know, what? I'm just going to forgive her. But just to tell you the thing that I did, uh, forgiving her and forgiving me was the hello how i don't know how ho, to pronounce ho, it. Ho, pono, pono. yeah hello pono, pono. i used i remember i used to do that before i yeah. went to sleep and i used to Lovely. say i forgive myself i get mm. forgive myself and mm. yeah that that closed the case mm. and i'm so happy about that but i'm actually happy that it happened because that actually pushed me into coming out of my cocoon because i was like mm. inside the cocoon and if there was not that like yeah stressful moment i would have been, always been a caterpillar inside the cocoon but mm. basically sh like sh the fact that there was so much stress and so much pain tension in that cocoon it actually yeah. made me push out so mm. i'm kind of grateful for that i'm the person who i am would i do it again i don't know mm. i don't want to lie but yeah you know, what it, it helped it helped right shape. I just, when I read your story about that, I thought, wow, talk about turning this around. Because I think too, being African descent, like it's no secret in history that Africans, Caribbeans, Aboriginals, you know, African-Americans, they've been demonized for centuries. Like it's yeah. gone on in history. So not only were you carrying your beliefs, you were carrying the beliefs of people above you. So if you do the work on this, it's like you're breaking free 
from generations worth of stuff. That's why this is, it, this is so, it's like you dropped the pebble in the pond and it ripples out. Like this is a massive thing, what you did here. Massive. Thank you. I yeah. didn't look at it as that. But yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah. huge because let's face it, you know, non-white cultures have been demonized by white cultures for for such a long time and it's no wonder you had that belief because yeah. you you got it from from years worth of of it being ingrained in you from from what was going on and and this was the collective consciousness around the world so this is so this is why this is so massive and i don't want to let it just go by as something you did and it what what you did was astounding yeah 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 i yeah I, I, uh, I hope there is no one feeling this type of emotion out there yeah. but if yeah. if they are feeling it's just mm. it's, it's just your brain playing tricks on you just change it because oh. our brain uh, i think if i read it somewhere your brain can be your friend or your enemy yeah. you just choose what you want it to be for you so you can yeah. choose it for you. like it could be your friend or if it could be your enemy because yeah. your brain can tell you so many things your beliefs yeah. other people's beliefs and it can make you do stuff that you don't want to do or yeah. it can be your friend and yeah. you know change all those all those things mm. so yeah so can i just ask the the ending with that she found the stuff and then was profusely apologetic. Did she contact you directly? For people no, that haven't she, heard your story, I'm asking these questions, yeah. No, she no, she didn't contact me directly. She contacted me. Uh, actually, she did not contact me. Um, basically, it was the court that sent me a letter, uh, yeah. that, that sent my lawyer a letter saying, you know, they found, the woman found her stuff. So we are, we not, not closing the case, but we are, uh, archiving, do, do we archive? Archiving, we, yep. Uh, archiving the the, yep. the case. So, yeah. what do you want to do next yeah. to my lawyer? So, yeah. I just sent her a message saying, "I forgive you." <laughs> just Did you? Short message, yeah. Short message. I I said thank you because this has drastically changed my reality. Yeah. Uh, so when when things like this happen to you it's probably yeah. probably means just you needed a shift because yeah. i i am completely a different person from who i was yep seven eight months ago yeah. i am completely not myself yeah um apart from the fact that i have a very beautiful success story to tell and yes yeah i was i i went through a lot of things i i was going down drain but yeah. so i i tanked her because I think if I came out of that, I think I could come out of yeah. any type of suffering. Yeah. And I think like, because when, when that happened, I had a lot of anxiety because yeah. like, I used to live in the future and I used to live in the past. Yeah. And then when that happened, unless it's, it's like losing my family or something happening mm. to them, I don't, I'm not scared of anything. Like literally I'm not scared of anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I said, you know, anything can be fixed. That was like the best thing that she could have ever done for me. So I, I said to her, thank you, because you drastically shifted my my reality and how I view things. And I forgive you because I know you didn't mean to. And yeah. I just, oh, that felt really good because I was, mm. I was like all the time, like, um, I usually walk from work to to my library or from library. Now because of COVID, I walk in the mornings. But yeah. usually when I'm walking, I'm always, always imagining and saying mm. stuff. So I really imagine that over and over and over again, like me yeah. sending a, some type of message to her where I said, thank you yeah. and I forgive you. So wow. that actually and She never happened. replied. I must say I'm surprised she never replied. I, it's a uh, surprise it's a surprise because it's it's actually not a surprise because she 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 can't respond to me because she she i think she's scared of me right now yeah she'd be anything in shame. she said yes shame. first of all she'd be in shame and second of all anything she says can and will be held against her in her head obviously i don't yeah. i don't care i don't yeah. care like uh everybody who hears about the story 
continues telling me, you can make a lot of money out of this. I don't care. I just it's want not about story. that. Yeah. It's not about that. Yeah. No, honestly, uh, honestly, mm. like really honestly, she, she, she changed. I'm so great. Mm. Like, I'm so grateful for that. Mm. Things that are happening in my life right now uh, are happening. I'm, I'm not kidding. I know people are like, <laughs> what is happening in your life? You don't have anything. You could have more. No. You're so grateful. Are happening. I'm like, yeah. no, I'm not, I'm on. No, I'm not kidding. Let me tell you the things yeah. that are happening. Me <laughs> and my family, we're so close. My mom, my sister, my brother, that moment in my life, they had been the best thing that ever happened to me. I have yeah. never, like, unconditional love that mm. happened during that and, period. And they, I can't and they knew it wasn't you, so they, you brought you closer together. Yes, it mm. brought, it brought, they protected me. Uh, they they supported me uh they didn't think about like their repetition because being yep. they, they could have become the sister so that's one two i mean yes i have done a lot of work but i don't think i would i would have been able to sit down and talk to you right now right here so it's like meeting my idol is like another thing and uh, i read so many books that probably i will not use for for now i'll probably yeah. use for other 20 years I, yep. I basically read 12 books of neville goddard which yep. i will probably use for the rest of my life yep. i know how my emotion i so many things i learned so many things that i i, I think like ten thousand, twenty thousand euros from her would not change i i yeah. will, with the knowledge and with the experience that i went through yep. i will make 20 times of that 30 yes. times of that. So. I agree. I agree. It's such an since, amazing, like when tr it's a transformation, it's a transformation. And she was the key that opened the lock. Yes. Especially because like I said, I don't think she woke up that morning saying, Hey, Mercy has a beautiful life. Let's ruin it for her. I don't no. think she did that. No, she had her reason. So yeah. yeah. I, and I don't want her to go through but thinking about, I'm going to lose my, the money for my kids because mm. of the things that I did. So I don't want to, I don't even want the kids to suffer or the mom to suffer or yeah. I don't want her to go through. I think she has to learn the lesson. I want someone else to teach her the lesson. I, in fact, I, 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 I believe that I taught her a lesson because- Yeah, of accusing before, guilty before proven innocent. Yeah. Yes, the fact I was reading this morning, I'm going to read it for you, just so funny because this a story that I read, a lot of, wait, look, it goes really well with this. I'm sorry that I'm doing this, but no, no, a it's fine. Little, a love little girl was holding two apples with both hands. Her mom came in softly, asked her, "Little girl, can you give me an apple?" The girl looked up at her, at her mom, for some seconds, and then suddenly took a quick bite of one apple and a quick bite of the other apple. Mom felt the the smile on her face freezing she was angry she tried hard not to reveal her disappointment then the little girl handed one of the apple one of the beaten apple to her mom and said mommy here you are this is sweeter one this is the sweeter one ah so before you actually accuse someone yep just, just listen no yeah listen. wow beautiful that's a great yeah. that's a great story it is it just because you would think oh She's oh, just being she greedy. Doing? She's being selfish, <laughs> eating both. She's ruined that other apple for the other person. I mean, you go through a whole myriad of, of thoughts. So yeah, it's, you can't be too quick to judge. You just cannot. You just cannot. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. so, that was a powerful talk about making lemonade out of lemons. Wow. That's profound, mm -hmm. profound. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so the Next. last one Next let's bit. try to make it short <laughs> i don't want to keep you <laughs> no no it's fine it's fine no problem okay this one actually is a happy i feel like story, i'm watching so. a good tv show at the moment <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good Fantastic. that's good it's good and i feel like i feel like i'm like living a deja vu even when you read the story <laughs> Even when you read the story, you were like, usually, I don't know if people have ever told, like if someone has ever told you this, but you have like, when you read stories, you could tell it's the first time you're reading them. You're yeah. not making them up and stuff. In fact, when yeah. you read them, they're like, um, she's very 
I, I think she meant to say happy. Yeah. And then you continue to move on. So I, I like, I imagine when you were reading my story, you did such a thing. In fact, I, I wrote it down very fast. So I mean, I, I probably made a lot of mistakes. And when you did that, it was like a deja vu. And now sitting down and talking to you, it's like a deja vu. For me, it's like reliving, reliving, like the best You've parts of my life, obviously. Been here, yeah. I know. So it's, it's actually really nice. So I love talking mm. about this stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. So after a little while, after, after the a little while, um, probably after four or five months, uh, or I think more than that, six months, I decided to be single and to appreciate uh, and to learn about me and to love myself. And during that period, obviously, I would, I, I, my biggest advice is to always, like the brain uh, has a memory, but it forgets, okay? Uh, it forgets uh, how it gets to someplace. Like, it remembers the emotions that you felt when something happened to you, but it actually forgets how you got there and all that sort of stuff. So I, I, I always suggest to everyone to continue doing self-love, to continue to continue learning about themselves, like um, reading a book, uh, learn, continue learning, and continue uh, continue doing little success stories, little things, mm. attracting little things. Uh, mm. Obviously, also not just limiting yourself with little things, because obviously, if you put a, a fish in a small tank, it's always going to be small. But if you put him in the ocean, it's going to be grow bigger than what well, mm. there's a saying, obviously. So, but you know, the little things help with the big things. So to always do self-love and stuff. So I continued working on my, on myself. I continue reading books, uh, watching your videos, obviously. I am responsible for half of your views. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would watch them even like, uh, I think most of, you know, the, the bridge of incidents happen within your videos i have like a lot of stories a bridge of incidents that i wrote down you know i wanted to watch this video of agnes but it never happened because the video was not downloading but i and then uh, when i came home i watched it now i understand why it was not downloading at that moment because i needed to learn the lesson because after going through something that i was supposed to go through during that moment of oh. uh, my walk yeah. so Anyways, I, I, I lose points sometimes, so you have no, to tell me no, to get it's back. it's fine, it's fine. So anyways, I, I continued doing the work. I continued uh, loving myself and learning a lot about myself and all that sort of stuff. And obviously that, you know, just uh, I, I was no longer a fish inside a tank. Now I was a fish inside, a, I, I can't say an ocean, but I was a fish inside a, a sea. So I knew, you know, can this happen? Can this happen? can I attract this? Mm. I mean, can like, and all little, little things like this person is not happy. This person is not happy. Is it because of me that I'm seeing this person not happy? Should I change that? I would script about it and that person would become happy. And then I said, okay, if it works on normal people, would it work on other people? Well, what is the difference between normal people and famous people? They're both spirits they're both you know like the oh, the only difference is that they are in different state than, than what we are so mm. okay what do i need you know to get to that state i just have to you know i i'm i'm very um crazy when it comes to this stuff so i i just do these questions all the time so anyways you know i started thinking you know uh and then there are things that i say you know if i attract this i mean this low works <laughs> I know it's, it's bad to say that, but, you know, I attract this, especially because, you know, you're, it, it never, you're never satisfied. You attract something, you want something, you attract something, mm. you want something. But what, mm. so, especially when they, because they happen in the most natural way possible, yeah. you say, but, but this was supposed to happen. Yeah, come on, this would have happened, you know, and you continue on and on. Anyways, I started entertaining the idea of, you know, a normal, uh, I'm just going to say normal for just the sake of saying normal, but a normal person going out with a famous person because there is a success story in your in your videos, also a girl going out with a with a famous person. Yeah. You know. So one day I was I I started thinking, but I didn't I didn't like specify uh, a specific person, a specific famous person, you know, that I wanted to attract. I just said, you know, like there 
but and then I had like negative beliefs you know obviously that popped up that said that's impossible but obviously the fact that Megan helped she was with the friends you know yeah. there has been occasions like yeah. really famous people have gone out with their fans and stuff so you know yeah. if that happened for them it could happen for anyone mm. so yeah uh, after like doing that uh, for, for a few days my friend she posts me she says hey this this friend of mine she she just you know she just uh she she canceled on me the last minute do you want to come to a concert with me and I'm the type of person who doesn't like concert I don't like concerts mm. they're, they're 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 too it's too hot it's too loud it's yeah. too much of people and I'm <laughs> yeah I'm, I, I grew up yes. in Sweden so I have I'm not still Italian when it comes to that so yeah it's too much I can't do it but she's like come on come on it's going to be fun she convinced me and so the night before she calls me and she says hey by the way uh i have a ticket for the pre inter uh, for the pre concert which is going to be the interview uh, so we have to leave early prepare and i'm like no i'm not like i was sleeping <laughs> over at a kid's house then because i was babysitting her overnight so i'm like i don't even have time to get home and get you know get pretty like she's mm. like no don't worry it's going to be a concert it's going to be sweaty mm. and you know ugly it's going to be two hours from where we leave so don't worry nobody's actually going to care just just come as you are mm. and I'm like okay you don't even give me time so at this point the real Mercy would have cancelled she doesn't give me time to get you know to go home at mm. least take a shower fix my hair eat uh, be normal for that day and then no she doesn't it's two hours away it's, it's a hot sunny day in Ju on july in july and i'm like it, it was more no than yes but you know i don't know why i said okay fine mm. so you can leave me alone she said and especially because it was an expensive concert and i don't even have to pay for it because she had the ticket and it's a pre-concert you know it will make a good story for the instagram so why yeah. not yeah so i said okay let's go we went we went we got there around four o'clock and it was very sunny it was outside and there were they were like I don't know these <laughs> this, this band I've never seen them mm. um, but obviously I saw this this singer and if you remember I told you I like blondes with curly hairs blue eyes mm. and they were talking about the situation in Italy they're, they're singers but they were talking about their work but at the same time they were talking about politics and how you know uh, they, were, they were they were not talking about normal stuff they were actually you know every discussion that we made was just I mean I don't know if it was me who connect who connect everything to spirituality or to you know helping others and all that sort of stuff but he was mm. he was making sense in my head he was making sense i was so fascinated i was listening to him I, in fact he was dressed with black t-shirt i was like really ugly i thought he was one of you know the people who was supposed to interview i didn't even think he was a singer there mm. so he was just talking normal but i was really interested in him and what he was saying he was so i was like and then she's like messy and i'm like yes I think he's looking at you and I'm like, who? She's like, him. I'm not going to say his name, but obviously yeah. if people go to my Instagram, they're probably going to see him. But she, he's looking at you and I'm like, who? He's looking at you. And I'm like, who? <laughs> She's like, that one, the blonde one. And I'm like, ah, okay, him. Ah, okay, interesting. So, like I said, I didn't even think he was, uh, mm. because I, uh, as you can hear, I, I, I grew up in an in international school. I speak English or I speak mm. Swedish. So the songs that I listen to are in that mm. department. I don't listen to Italian music, even though it's a very beautiful music. I love it. Um, so anyways, she's like, he's looking at you. And I'm like, what's going on? No, shut up. That's not true. She's like, he, he is the main singer. You know that, right? And he's like, he's not looking at me. Let's go. Let's go. She's like, come on. He's probably looking at you. He would definitely take a picture with you. And I guess I'm not kidding. From <laughs> here to the end of the city there were 16 year old girls screaming yes let's take a picture Just and you didn't even know who he was <laughs> yes and i'm like so i i looked at her and i told her are you kidding me you expect me four o'clock july in the middle of the sun to be in line with these 16 years old no. and take a picture with him 
and I said you're delusional let's go let's go get dinner before the concert yeah. we went to yeah. get dinner we went to get dinner and uh the band was on top of the stage and another band was performing so there were th two three bands that were supposed to perform that night and so if like for a few seconds he came up the stage just to I think to have a look and then he she's she she's like uh she's like, hey mercy look there's your guy <laughs> and I'm like shut up she's like once you look once you look up who he is you're going to be devastated that you didn't take a picture and I mean, out of curiosity, I just went to my phone and I looked him up and I saw he, he was actually really famous. <laughs> and I said to myself, damn it, I could have taken a picture with him for my, you know, yeah. at least. But then I, I just, I, I let it go because mm. I, just, I was not, you know, I was not yeah. clingy or I, I didn't need it you know, yeah. or that sort of so anyways, time passes, it was, the crowd was like, we were 200, 300 people pushing each other, dancing and stuff. At some point, yeah. uh, I hear a bump on my shoulder like this. I turn around annoyed and it was him in the middle of the crowd, standing in the middle of the crowd with a hat or something on. Uh, my friend was like, she turned around, she says, Mercy, it's him. <laughs> and then she's like, can I take a picture? yeah and then she sounds like uh, she was more interested in taking a picture than you were <laughs> i know she's like can i take a picture and he's like of course sure and then he put his arms around me and then she took her, her picture yeah. and mm. uh yeah that was that <laughs> and i think then yes when we were coming back home when we were coming back home she's like we have to put this picture you have to put, post this picture and i'm like have you seen the picture it's in the night time and uh, I can't post it. If you want, I can post it as a story, but I can't post it because I'm kind of like very, I, I love my Instagram page. It, it's, 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 I mean, I love it. I love posting uh, day pictures and stuff. And I had yeah. a, a team going on there. She's like, no, we're posting it as a normal. She took my phone and then uh, she posted it and she tagged him. And the next day he didn't like the picture. He didn't comment on the picture or anything of that. So he texted me. Uh, no, he, he started following me and then he texted me and then we started talking and that led mm -hmm. uh, one thing to another. So that's how it happened. So just to give you, uh, the only work that I did when it comes to this relationship happened afterwards. Before, not a lot of work, not a lot of conscious work, work went into it, but afterwards, mm. Mm, when people started hearing about, you know, me going out with with this person, uh, they they told me so many things. They told me uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, mm. You know, so many negative things. Yeah. And uh, I actually, you know, I actually believed those, and I actually let those influence me. And I like I started like noticing that things were going downhill uh, and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, I did the work like I always do. I sat down, I worked on them and everything started to becoming normal again. Yeah. And another thing, another work that I did that I remember very well is the fact that since he travels a lot yeah. uh, within the company for work, uh, it's usually me when he is in the city that he lives in that I go to him. So it's yeah. usually me uh, uh, visiting him. So, but obviously when, like, if he comes around like Tuscany where I live, if yeah. he comes around my city, he would, he would call and say, Hey, I'm here, but we would know at the last minute. So I hated this. And I said to myself, wait, something I hate. That means it's something I can change. Yeah. If you know what you don't want, then you know what you want. Yes. So I said, you know what I'm going to, I, I, I remember scripting about, you know, so happy that he comes to visit me all the time. And he, I'm so happy. Uh, everything happens effortlessly, and everything is planned. I wrote down everything that I wanted, and obviously, yeah. not the thing that I want, but the thing that I would feel when that thing that I want happens. Yes. So I don't write down. I'm so happy. I have a black car, but I'm I like I have a black Jeep car. But I write down. I'm so happy uh, because I feel so amazing and confident when I drive around my, my black Jeep car. So I yeah. wrote down the feeling and I scripted down the feeling and I, 
uh, affirm the feeling. And mind you, so just to explain to you how things work when you're working from your consciousness, so me always going there, letting things happen, and how the universe can actually move 7 billion people to your advantage. So what happened was, he was supposed to come to a city next to me for a concert that lasted for nine days or more, more I don't remember. Um, but that city, the concert, was canceled because the stadium was not able to hold him. So 20 years of singing career, he has never been to my city. Like 20 years of music career, he's never been to my city. He has traveled all over Italy and Europe, but never to yeah. my city. Yeah. So the solution that they found was letting him have the concert within in my city's stadium. So he had to be here for nine whole days. Nine whole days. I did not have to move. I just would walk up to where he was. So like you like I said, you can you can try to make things happen. Yeah. Push things to make it happen. Yeah. But you're always going to be working from one consciousness point of view. Instead, just change your communication with the universe to say, yeah, yeah. make this happen for me. Mm. So, it's yeah. so much less effort, exhaustion, trying to control. You've got to let go of control. You've got to let go of forcing, pushing, manipulating. And you've got to, like you say, work from the inside out. Yeah. That's yeah. a great example. That's such a great example. Wow. I, look, I'm just blown away at your... Um, well, the knowledge is one thing, but the level of application, that's where the jewels are. Because you can read and read and read Neville, read and read and read Florence, read and read. But you have to take the words off the paper and apply them. And that's when you see results. And you've, you've had such a transformation uh, with that woman and stealing that stuff. That could have ended up a real nightmare and it didn't. And then this stuff with losing your first partner and then transforming into something that just came to you. You weren't even interested in going to see music. You didn't like concert, but you ended up there because you were wanting to, well, your friend was going to have to go on her own and you knew that. Yeah. So you went to help her out. So it's really interesting when you follow the pebbles that are falling out of the bag, as they say, and just kind of go with it. It's amazing what's happened. So this is a phenomenal turnaround it is just and, and I know so many people want a specific person and I don't think that's a bad thing but it's not the only way yeah. there's so many other avenues that can unfold with someone new that can come in or the person your ex your specific person can transform and become something much much more and in your case it, it's just been uh, I mean who could have imagined that you know like you can't kind of imagine that so it's yeah. it's um it's fantastic i'm so glad you've came on to share this because it's um it just shows that we are very limited in what we can imagine so it's the unknown channels you know that that really where the magic happens when you can really surrender let go and allow and i think you know abraham hicks talks a lot about allowing and i think she says it again and again and again to the point people don't even hear it but what she's saying about allowing is profound. It's profound. Yeah. yeah. I think, wow. Yeah. I, I think the best thing that you could do for yourself is to be disciplined, to be yep. disciplined against the negative emotions. Absolutely. Negative beliefs. Yeah. Because what happens here? It's your worst enemy or your greatest friend. It's all the solutions. The problems all start there and the solutions are all there too. So, so yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Now we will put, yeah, me too. It's great. Can you send me a list of um, books you've read, things to add? Um, if you want to add your Instagram, you want, if you've got whatever bits and pieces and whatever you want to add, just send me bits and I will add it in under the description so people can follow. And I'll put down the techniques you talked about, the Ho'oponopono and, you know, some stuff around beliefs and all of that. Cause okay. I think that's really huge too. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And I got to learn more bits, you know, because as you're sharing it verbally, I got to hear more bits, uh, you know, than what you shared in your story. There's a lot more there. So that's great. Well, Do you want to say goodbye to everybody? And then uh, you and I can say goodbye in private. 
Okay. Uh, goodbye, everybody. I hope you all manifest whatever you want and just be a fish in the ocean and never a fish in a tank and be disappointed. Yeah. Ah, nice last words. Lovely. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this interview. I will put the interviews playlist down below for those of you that want to watch more inspirational interviews. And I will put all the bits and pieces that Marcy sends us to connect with her. And hopefully she'll answer comments in the thread, the thread down below as well. Thank you, Mercy. That was wonderful. Yeah. Really, really wonderful. Okay. Hang on and we'll say goodbye in private.